Out 11 fentanyl hits rock bottom. The price tag set by a suspected drug dealer that had police doing a double take. Plus a celebrity sighting while on the lookout for a cougar as we learn what may have attracted at least one big cat back to the coast. But first, my only child, he was just a kid. A mother's emotional plea after losing her son to a driver, police say, who was drunk. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Mulko. That 11 year old boy, Ryan Ambrose, died last month, allegedly at the hands of a driver who was under the influence speeding and who had also recently been shot. Alma McCarty is following up on this tragic case tonight as the suspect appeared in court just steps away from the victim's mother, Alma. David, more than a dozen people from Ryan's family showed up to Dupree Smith's arraignment Tuesday afternoon, including his mother. She urged the judge to consider her situation and her persistent pain after losing her only child to the deadly crash. Amid a sea of white t-shirts reading Justice for Ryan, Mitzi Sarate stood to address the judge. This is so hard for me and my family. I flew from Arizona just to be here, just for me, just for you to hear my plea as a mother. On July 8th, 11-year-old Ryan Ambrose, Sarate's only child, was in Portland visiting family when a driver slammed into the car he was riding in. The force of the impact at Southeast 102nd and Stark so strong that police report the suspect's car flipped and traveled an entire block before stopping. Not long after the wreck, Ryan died at the hospital. We really want to plead that he is staying in custody. That's the least I ask. The 29-year-old suspect, Dupree Smith, pled not guilty to manslaughter, DUII, and reckless driving charges. Five years ago, almost to the day, we lost his dad in the same circumstances. And we just don't feel that it's right that somebody who was under the influence was able to be out free on the streets when our little boy is not here anymore. Smith told authorities he'd been speeding to the hospital after he was shot more than once at his brother's memorial service. On Tuesday, the judge maintained his conditional release. I told uh, the defendant at that first court appearance that I would take him back into custody if he either tampered with that scram bracelet or he drank. And um, we checked in with Close Street Supervision earlier today and they say he's been in full compliance with his release conditions. Ryan's family still heartbroken, remembering the 11-year-old boy, so creative and so kind, lost in such a tragic way. He was one of a kind, the most sweet, loving human being. And I know that wherever he is, he's in a better place because he deserves it. Now, the judge explained his decision to the family and acknowledged that it may not be very satisfying and may seem unfair and unjust. Smith's next court date will be in September. Thank David. you, Alma. Appreciate your reporting on that tonight. Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. Now, former President Donald Trump has been criminally indicted for a third time in this case for his efforts, prosecutors say, to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Trump is now facing four felony counts, including conspiracy to defraud the United States and conspiracy to deprive voters of their rights. The former president has fiercely denied any wrongdoing he is scheduled to be arraigned in federal court in Washington, D.C. on Thursday. Tonight, we are tracking several fires in the mid Willamette Valley. The latest in Silverton is a three alarm brush fire on Pine Street near Airport Road. Three other blazes that also broke out this afternoon have been mopped up in Marion County. The Fern Ridge Road fire threatened structures and burned 32 acres about eight miles east of Staten. In Lynn County, another fire burned about 30 acres in a wheat field a few miles north of Sio. And also in Lynn County, a fire that sparked just south of Lebanon prompted some level three evacuations since all lifted. No structures were damaged by any of those fires. We now know the name of the suspect Kelso police shot following an alleged hit and run. The Cowlitz County Sheriff's Department have identified him as 19 year old Daniel Madden. They say he was driving a white SUV this morning that collided into several vehicles near the Columbia River Mobile Home Park. Authorities say they tracked the suspect to his home and when he came up holding a pistol and refused to follow their commands, 
Two officers fired shots. Madden was taken to the hospital where he's listed in critical but stable condition. The officers involved have been placed on leave. And also in Washington, State Patrol have launched a new tool aimed at improving the chance of catching hit and run drivers. In the event of a serious crash, an alert will go out to law enforcement and the media with the vehicle description and license plate. The public can also sign up for alerts, which authorities will also post on social media. State lawmakers signed off on the program, which is now in a two year trial. Well, now to our fentanyl epidemic and a significant recent downtown bust by Portland police, an alleged dealer who they say was selling pills laced with fentanyl for less than a dollar a pop. Authorities say the suspect had some 3,500 pills on him along with fentanyl powder, and they add he was selling the little blue pills, the fake pills, for about 80 cents each. It's something they had to check and double check because that number police say in their experience seemed preposterously low. Don't trust any drugs you buy on the street. All drugs that we've tested that we've seized in the last year have tested positive for fentanyl, including you know cocaine and meth and other recreational drugs. Everything has fentanyl residue on it, and you know obviously at this point the pills you're buying on the street that people tell you oxycodone they're counterfeit fentanyl. You're putting your life and people you know there's li their lives at risk as well. Well, police identified the suspect as a D Centeno. He was in court this afternoon facing charges of trademark counterfeiting delivery of oxycodone and unlawful possession of a controlled substance. Well, speaking of challenges on our streets, noon 11, we're talking about National Night Out. That is the annual event meant to help people build safer communities by connecting with first responders and their neighbors. Catherine Cook is here now. Catherine, you were in East Multnomah County tonight. What'd you find? David, we found a lot of people wanting to connect. For many, the goal behind this event is especially critical amid rising crime and the fear that their sense of community is slipping away. Tonight, we saw a lot of neighbors holding tightly to it. On this hot August night in Gresham, police lights are flashing, first responders are everywhere, and it's fun. You can feel it in the air and the water. It's National Night Out, a chance for people, wherever they live, to gather with neighbors, meet the ones they don't know, and remind each other of why community matters. I am a huge, huge advocate for community and being around just the place you live in. Nana Hearth brought her kids, including 13-year-old daughter Harmony. For them, life in East Multnomah County is rewarding, but still comes with challenges. I don't always feel safe sometimes because you don't know what's going to happen. And it's hard for uh, parents to be able to let their kids come out, you know? Those concerns aren't lost on lawmakers like state representatives Hua Nguyen and Ricky Ruiz. Both of their districts include parts of East Portland, whose residents are speaking out about livability concerns. This is an example of having this for one night and where you're looking at different cultures, you're looking at different races, and they're all coming together and building community. And I think this is where it starts. On Monday, the city of Portland shared the results of its 2022 Portland Insight Survey, summarizing feedback from almost 5,300 residents. The survey covered topics like livability, community safety, homelessness, and economic recovery. In several of those categories, officials noted more negative responses from people living on Portland's east side. But clearly, there is a lot of good here and the desire for more of it. We're going to keep talking about it. We're going to have to say we demand, um, you know, safe neighborhoods in our area. And so um, events like this is really helpful. The more community they have, the safer our um, neighborhoods are. Maybe few communities do community better than Maywood Park, the city within the city of Portland. It's near the Park Rose neighborhood and only has about 300 homes. And just about everybody knows everybody. So if there's something weird going on, somebody thinks something looks suspicious, we're all over it. Doug Hurlbert has lived here 16 years. His wife Jennifer has lived here her whole life. They say the formula is simple, but it seems to work. But if you know your neighbors, you care about your neighbors, and you look out for each other. For law enforcement, it's a night to build another part of the community that they want to see more of. A chance for them to meet when it's not an emergency. I think that having those relationships between law enforcement and our community members is is critical in uh, crime prevention and addressing crimes that may occur. Whether it's Portland or Gresham or the places in between, it's all community, building and rebuilding every day. In Gresham, Katherine Cook, KGW News.
All about connecting there. Well, residents in Cannon Beach are keeping an eye out for cougars after two more sightings were reported this week. You probably remember the last sightings two weeks ago when several people got photos and video of the cougar on Haystack Rock. Now, we don't know if Monday's two sightings are the same animal. They happen between 2nd Avenue and Sunset Boulevard west of Highway 101. We went to the beach today and found the sightings were not detouring people. We even ran into KISS guitarist Tommy Thayer, who lives in the area. I've never heard of anything like that before. You know, a mountain lion or cougar coming onto the beach, so times are changing. <laughs> the fact that it's hanging out in our busiest, most popular beach town at the height of tourist season, it's pretty crazy. He said that Canada Beach Police say they did find an injured elk in the area, which may have attracted the cougar or cougars.